What's doing, everybody? Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. I'm Alec Lace, and before I hit you with today's interview, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the link in the description so you can listen to all of the interviews I've done with so many tremendous dads, including Dana White, Deion Sanders, Tony Hawk, and so many others. Now, let's get going with today's interview. Joining me now, a First Class Father, Craig Wayne Boyd. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. Hey, man. Thank you so much for having me. All right, let's start right here. How many kids do you have, and how old are they? Uh, I have four kiddos at the moment. I've got uh, seven, four, two, and new. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, very cool. I got four kids myself. Uh, what kind of uh, sports or activities you got the older ones into? Uh, my oldest is a little, he's a BMX racer. Uh, we've been out on the track a lot. Uh, Daddy dislocated his shoulder trying to keep up with him, but <laughs> it's, it's been a fun thing. And I, uh, I wanted to get him involved in something that um, he could kind of push himself with. And uh, it'd be something that he's not sitting on a bench or anything like that. I thought it was really cool to get into the to the BMX racing. Yeah, that's awesome. Did you guys do any kind of like gender reveal for the new one here to find out what you were having? Or did you wait to the end to find out? Oh, man, I, I can't handle surprises. That's not something for me. <laughs> I, I have to know what's going on. I have to be able to plan for it. So, yeah, as soon as we were able to find out, we were finding out. OK, very cool. Craig, if you could just take a minute here to hit my listeners with a little bit about your background and what you do. Well, man, um, my name is Craig Wayne Boyd, and I'm a season seven winner of The Voice. I've been a, a musician most of my life, and um, it was something that I thought was probably going to be the main thing that I've done throughout life. And uh, little did I know that uh, that kiddos would come into my life, and, and fatherhood would take me in uh, uh, a different direction and, and kind of uh, make me realize that I'm, I can't be as selfish as I was before. Yeah. What would you say has been like the biggest challenge for you since becoming, uh, you know, the, the winner of The Voice? Uh, what are some of the challenges that come along with that while being a father? Uh, the balance of time is probably the, the biggest thing for me. Um, when I when I, I try to when I'm at home, be that be a dad and just stay at home and, and uh, put the phone away and uh, and hang with the kids because that's what they want. They want your time. And uh, so I, I try my best to do that. And uh, when Daddy has to leave to go to work, then he's 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 gone for a few days. Yeah, yeah, very cool. And uh, you know, like I said, I have uh, four children myself. And for my wife and I, the hardest transition we went through was going from two to three. Uh, that that year seemed like one day for us when we had added our third. Uh, what was the most challenging transition for you so far, and how has it been with uh, adding the fourth right now? Um, number four has been knock on, I better find something to knock on because <laughs> it's been fairly easy and I don't want to say, say that lightly, but, uh, I think you're correct in saying that the transition from two to three, that's the, that's when you become outnumbered at that point. And, uh, that's, that was probably the more trying time. Now, number four has been, uh, not as, not as bad. Yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you on that. And uh, what type of uh, disciplinarian are you, Craig, as a dad? And is it different than the discipline style that you grew up with? Um, it's been di it's been kind of different for each kid because their um, their spirits are different. Um, my oldest is so tenderhearted. Um, I think he's had maybe he's had the the hand or, or a uh, or a paddle maybe once or twice in his life. And now it's just a count. It's one, and, and then he's jumping. Um, and luckily enough, the fear of, uh, of, of, of God or dad or whatever you want to call it, um, being in him has helped me out with the other three. Um, my, my middle son, uh, Graydon, the two-year-old, now he's, uh, he's going to be trying on me, I'm, I'm certain. Um, I've found for him is... Being able to or separate him from what he's doing is uh, probably a stronger punishment than even anything for him. Because he, if I put him in the corner, then that's what really breaks his uh, his uh, attention, and uh, and he realizes that he's in trouble. <laughs> yeah, well said. And what what about what was the um, uh, were you a fan or a, a watcher of The Voice before you auditioned for? What what kind of pushed you over the edge there to try out for the show? And was that the first time you you, you made the attempt? I had never really watched the show before. Um, before I had moved to Nashville back in in like the 2000 era, um, I had seen American Idol, and then I had heard about the Voice stuff, you know, as a as it as it showed up, and um, it, it intrigued me. But I had um, being a musician and running down that path, 
my career had many highs and many lows and I was actually on one of those low points. And uh, I, I was like, I got an email that said, Hey, are you interested in being a part of the voice? And I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a sick joke from a friend or something. Uh, I was like, yeah, right. And there's no, we're actually serious. And uh, so I, I followed up with it. Um, and I knew at that point I had, I had a, just a, a newborn son um, from a, in, from a previous uh, relationship. And I was, uh, I was able to, I was doing construction work on the side just to uh, make ends meet, uh, to buy diapers and, and cans of tuna fish for me. <laughs> that was, that's what you had to do. You know, uh, the kids, the kiddo came first. Um, and uh, I knew that I, if I took the chance to do this, that I had the possibility of doing something well with it. And luckily enough, my, my, uh, that was right. Yeah. And you know, Craig, there's a lot of parents out there that, you know, maybe they're stuck in a job that they, they necessarily don't really like. And, and they have these kind of talents on the side and they enjoy either singing or music in, in, at some capacity. What kind of advice do you have maybe for the parent out there that's listening that, that really their passion is with singing. They're working this job. They don't like, they don't, they're afraid to kind of take a chance because you know, they don't want to do any damage to their own family. What kind of advice do you have for that parent maybe seeking a, a career in music? Um, it, it's, it's a, it's a double-edged sword, you know, um, cause the kiddos in your, in your family is obviously, uh, needs to be the most important thing. Um, I was blessed in the way that I was, uh, able to, to chase that dream and, and had a support system around me that was, that allowed me to do that, um, and see if it was, see if it was something that would work for me. Um, that would probably be the biggest advice is to, is to make sure that you have the support system around you, that you can uh, have the ability to chase something of the sort. Yeah. Well said. And I know that Nashville recently was rocked by the tornadoes that went through there and everything. Uh, were you th in Tennessee at the time when that happened and what has the uh, after effects been like over there for you? Oh man, I, uh, I was here in town and I, um, I had a friend of mine that messaged me at about uh, 12, 1230 in, in, in the morning. And I, I woke up and my, my son was uh, off with at his mom's house and happened to be Mount Juliet, which if you've seen the news, that was just rocked in uh, Stoner Creek Elementary is where my son's been going to school and it was just leveled. So, um, yeah, I was uh, I was up all night um, via because of because of the tornado going through Mount Juliet. Um, it took out cell towers and everything else. And I wasn't able to find out uh, if if he was even OK. Um, until early morning, and it it had me devastated. Yeah, it's one of those things where you wake up, you start seeing this stuff trending on Twitter. That's usually where I find out like something like this has happened. So it was, uh, but it was great to see the outpouring of support that came in immediately. Um, you know, f for the city, uh, you know, and the after effects of that. Um, yeah, this town, this town is definitely one of those towns that uh, that that helps each other. Um, and well, like I just mentioned, making sure you have a support system around you. Uh, this town is definitely is uh, well versed with that. And um, it's uh, it's been amazing to see the outpouring of love and support to, to everyone. Yeah. And it's one of the good benefits about all the technology and the social media, because there's so many downsides of it. But uh, stuff like this, it seems to be a big benefit where people can come together and figure out ways to help out. But on the technology, that's one of the big struggles for myself right now. My oldest of my four is 13, uh, and the technology is an issue, as it is for so many parents out there. Have you introduced uh, your oldest yet to technology? Is he involved in swiping screens and YouTube and all that stuff? How do you handle that? Um, actually, surprisingly enough, I, I have all – the three olders are, uh, are all technology savvy. Um, and put the, the bad part about that is, like, going back into the tornado stuff – I didn't realize how much uh, intake of the tornado information that even my two year old was taking in until he, they were playing upstairs. Uh, I think it was yesterday. And he comes running downstairs. He's like, Daddy, 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 NATO outside, NATO outside. I was like, What? What are you? He's, and his uh, sister came down. She was like, Oh, we're playing tornado. I was like, Do what? <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize how much of that information that they were taking in and they were playing. Uh, I guess that's the way for them to cope with it, that there was like, oh, there's a tornado outside. We're playing that. I'm like, oh, wow. Um, but getting back to the uh, the technology stuff, um, I, I have, I allow my son to have his, he's, he's got an iPad. Um, 
and so do the youngers. But I have, uh, of course, the the block, the kid block on there for them, so that they uh, they can't access uh, things that I would prefer than them not. Yeah, and, uh, and, st- and staying with the technology here, it's changed the way that we consume so much, especially the way we watch movies now and TV shows. But it also affects the way that we now consume um, or listen to music. Since you now your your career has taken off here and you're in the music industry, um, how much uh, of a problem is the technology for you when you're trying to put music out there? And is a lot of it? Do you do a lot more live shows because of that? Um, it is definitely the the. Even with uh, right now, Spotify and and uh, there's a, a couple of Amazon, I believe they're they're suing the songwriters at the moment and trying to uh, to lessen the amount, which had not been changed up until I think last year. They changed it for the first time since like 1909. Uh, the the rate of what the songwriter got paid um, that amount it's it's just ridiculous the the amount of money that we are losing off of because album sales aren't happening anymore so yeah it, it, that in turn has it keeps me away from home a little bit more than than i would prefer because I, we have to make ends meet right yeah and i always wonder how, how difficult that must be for the artist just because i mean yeah I, I was i grew up in the era where we couldn't wait to get the album and that was a whole part of the that went along with it just getting the inside cover looking at the lyrics and, and things like that i kind of miss that uh, with this now, everything is just downloaded, streamed, and it seems like all the content is for free to get. It's uh, it, it, it definitely makes it harder. Uh, I'm I'm old school too. I mean, I, in my garage, I've got uh, I got boxes and boxes of CDs that <laughs> I, I go through and pull out of, of about tw- twenty or thirty of them and, and throw in the house so that I can listen to them, and then I switch them all out. Um, I that was the fun part for me growing up, and that's what actually brought me into music was reading all of the liner notes and and knowing who the musicians were and, and who wrote the songs and stuff like that. To me, that was the that was the fun part. Yeah, very cool. What does the bedtime routine look like for you there, Craig, when you're putting the kids? Are you a lullaby guy here? Are you singing them songs uh, from the latest album? How do you got to put them down to sleep? Yeah, it's so funny. I uh, There's a few songs that I sing from my childhood uh, with uh, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, and uh, uh, She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain When She Comes, uh, and uh, of course, Johnny Cash walked the line. That's uh, that seems to be the closer that shuts down the kiddos at that point. They're <laughs> right into that one. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, that's the go-to, huh? Oh yeah. Uh, what are what are some of the biggest values that you're hoping to instill in your kids here? Um, respect, um, respect of their of their uh, peers. To me, I think that's the most important thing. Because if you res- if you respect yourself. And you respect others, then then you are able to gain that uh, in return. Yeah, very well said. And uh, obviously, your career's taken off here. What kind of goals or plans do you have here for yourself for the future? Um, we are. I'm working in the in the studio right now. Um, I've been. That's where Daddy's been going to work lately. Is uh, going into the studio and working on a new album. And uh, that's been keeping me busy. And we've got uh, some new announcements coming, uh, like uh, within weeks. Of, of this new project and i'm very very excited for people to hear and uh, understand what, what we've been working on yeah very cool i look forward to hearing that and uh last thing i want to hit you with here craig i love to ask all the dads that i get on the podcast what type of advice do you have for the new dad or for that about to be father who's out there listening uh trust your instincts because uh there's not a book out there that'll teach you what you uh what your natural instincts will tell you Yeah, very well said. I love the message. This has been an honor for me. i got to say, Craig Wayne Boyd, you're a first-class father all the way, and thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time on First Class Fatherhood. Hey, brother, thank you so much. Glad to be a part.